Annyeong doobies! Today, we're gonna be recreating some of the most famous street foods in Korea. Garlic, Korean fried chicken. And when I say garlic, it's not one or two cloves. Maybe a bowl, maybe two. We're Korean. There's never, ever enough garlic in the world. This is how many garlics we're going to be using today. We're using 10 heads of garlic and one clove. And I'm going to show you where we're going to use this one clove later. First things first, we're going to copy this garlic. Okay, so I've cleaned the garlic from before and the right here. And what we're gonna do is cut the top off so that later when we bake it, it's gonna be a lot easier to squeeze it out. And it's also totally fine to leave the skin on as long as they're not moldy. And I don't know if this is a Korean thing, but we definitely view garlic as kind of like an aphrodisiac in a sense. Wouldn't recommend eating this on a date night. Maybe, honestly, it depends what kind of freak you are. We think of it as like a source of heat and power when you're suffering from a cold or a flu. We eat a lot of garlic, which is true because it has a lot of allicin in it. And we're gonna be baking it at, I think 260 degrees. I'm not sure, I actually need to check my recipe. Still alive. Thank you for Keystify for sponsoring today's video. So I'm sure most of you have heard of Keystify already. They have amazing protective phone cases and I'm really excited to collaborate with them. They sent me these beautiful phone cases and I was so stoked to get them. I've been really loving the extra protection from the bounce cases especially. And even for someone like me who was reckless and clumsy at times, Keystify has got my back covered. I also got a customized clear case for anyone who likes simplistic design. And if you go to the website, you can see all the artists they've partnered up with and they have an incredibly wide range of collection to choose from. Plus, it's made from using recycled phone cases with their sustainability program. It's a great present for upcoming holidays. So use my code in the description box for 15% off. So it's 250 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit for my American viewers. And uh, I'm gonna cover it with just enough oil to cover the garlic. And I'll be using neutral oil because olive oil is expensive. I mean, you can use olive oil too, but I'm cheaping out. Oh, somebody didn't preheat their oven. So what we're gonna be doing instead is confiting the garlic on stovetop. Okay, so while the garlic is going, I am going to work on the chicken, baby. I should probably put this in a separate container before I start it. But sometimes life is just like that, you know? It's a small one. It's so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to spatchcock a chicken the Korean way. So the French way is what? You cut along the spine so that it goes really, really flat, right? But the Korean way, we flip the bird this way. Breast side up, yeti's up. And I know some of you might be thinking, oh, if we cut breast side up, isn't it gonna get dry? Actually, no, because by frying the bird whole with the bones, it actually really helps with retaining the moisture of it. So I found that it doesn't dry out and it stays really, really nice and moist, especially with all the bones holding the moisture onto it. I'm gonna crack it open so it's open like this. 
where the wishbone is. So it's flat and we're gonna turn it around. Again, you wanna dislocate where the bone meets, right here. And we wanna flatten the bird as much as possible so that it cooks evenly through. What we're gonna do is salt it liberally on both sides just to draw out some of the excess moisture and then pat it down. Salt on the other side as well. And don't be shy with the salt. So now we're gonna prepare the batter. So the key to Korean fried chicken is Christmas and very, very thin batter. And to achieve that, we're gonna put half and half AP flour and cornstarch. Potato starch also works too. It just really helps makes that outer layer very thin, very crispy, and it's what characterizes Korean fried chicken. I'm also going to be putting half a tablespoon of turmeric powder and this is really mainly for the color. A bit of salt, a bit of black pepper, and one cup of cold ice water. And you want the water to be cold so that it doesn't create gluten in the batter. So our garlic has now finished cooking and you can tell that it's done because it's very soft. Whole house smells absolutely wonderful. If I could choose a diffuser for my house, it would be this smell. I'm going to strain the oil from the garlic so that we can use it for later use and cool down the garlic cloves so that it's, you know, we don't burn ourselves when we're squeezing it out. And don't throw away this oil after you're done. It's gonna be this beautifully garlic infused oil that you can use for dressings, for finishing sauces. It's gonna be amazing. You're not gonna regret it. These have now cooled down, so I'm gonna squeeze them out. Now we're gonna season it. Salt, black pepper. Honey would be nice. If you remember the garlic that we saved from earlier, we're gonna microplane this in so that it adds a bit of that spiciness and pungentness back. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the garlic oil from before to kind of loosen it up and also just have that nice glistening sheen on it. Onto the grand finale, I'm going to fry the chicken. This has dried out pretty nicely, and I'm gonna put it in the batter. I'm gonna do a temperature test. You want the oil to be anywhere between 175 and 180, or you can do that. And once the batter drops to the bottom and then comes right back up, it's ready to fry. I'm just letting some of the excess batter drip off. Breast side up, in it goes. Wow. And you wanna let it cook through for about two to three minutes on each side and we're going to be double frying as well. So this process is mainly to cook the chicken evenly through. So the meat has rested. It's gonna go in the oil for a second fry.
dripping. It's dripping. Look how moist it is. I can't wait to give this a try. Mm. I'm gonna show you a magic trick. Oh, incredibly, incredibly moist, shatteringly crispy, and it holds up to the garlic as well. And it's a little spicy, it's sweet, it's salty, and the chicken is just so moist. So moist. Wow. I'm in heaven. Good night, doobies. I got a Sailor Moon. Do you know what Sailor Moon is? Mm -hmm. You don't know Sailor Moon? Oh. Is it a red one? No.